This week on The Grind, Bill Wilroth is in Kansas for an afternoon field hunt for mallards. It's a lifestyle for the rough and rugged kind. The tougher the game, the longer the pain, the better the ride. We do what we can to stay ahead, cause the modern world wants us left for dead. You better believe as long as we breathe, the sun's gonna rise. We dig real deep, try a little harder, buckle down tight. Go a little farther so we can look back and be proud of what we've done. Sometimes we gotta work under the gun, don't sweat the battle, make sure the war's won. Keep on keeping on, goes the bottom line, it's a... Labor of love we call the grind. The grind is brought to you by Canadian Waterfowl Supplies. Decoys and gear for marsh and field. Lucky Duck Premium Decoys. Masters of Deception. Dakota Decoy. Premium gunning decoys for demanding hunters. Wild Ear. Custom fit hearing enhancement and protection. Rio. The official ammunition of the grind waterfowl TV. Pro Drive, shallow water outboards, authentic Wyoming high mountain seasonings, Sitka, specialized outdoor wear and equipment, Delta Waterfowl, the Duck Hunters Organization, and these fine sponsors. The mallard duck has long been North America's most popular species of waterfowl to hunt. This amazingly adaptable bird breeds throughout the temperate and subtropical regions of not only North America, but can also be found in Europe, Asia, North Africa, and has been introduced to New Zealand, Australia, Peru, Brazil, Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, and the Falkland Islands of South Africa, making these popular birds the most recognizable duck in the world. Most domestic ducks today are the descendants of mallards. There are over 60 documented subspecies of mallards around the world. North America has more mallards than any other continent and has the most extensive breeding range of any duck on the North American continent. Most North American mallards breed across the northern third of the continent as far north as the Bering Sea. The highest breeding densities occur in the prairie pothole region of Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and North Dakota. Female mallards have a tendency to breed near the area in which they were hatched. A female mallard may lay up to half her body weight in eggs. Mallard ducks are noted for their tendency to hybridize with other duck species and have been documented to hybridize with pintail, widgeon, gadwell, black ducks, green-winged teal, and even canvasbacks. Around the world, mallards will hybridize with Hawaiian ducks, the gray duck of New Zealand, and the Pacific black duck of Australia. Mallards will typically live between 5 to 10 years old in the wild, but one of the oldest documented wild mallards was a male at least 27 years, 7 months old when he was shot in Arkansas in 2008. He had been banded in Louisiana in 1981. This incredible duck is one of the most hardiest of ducks with the adaptability to migrate much later than other duck species, but can travel 800 miles in an 8-hour period. A king of the marsh and delicacy on the table, the remarkable mallard's large size and cunning intelligence make this popular bird one of North America's most desirable and coveted game birds. We're on day five in central Kansas with High Caliber Outdoors, Adam Gilkey, Ben Webster, and we've hooked up with Corey Cribb from Falling Feathers Game Calls. He got a hold of Adam, contacted Adam, he's got a field full of mallards. We're setting up for an afternoon field mallard hunt. Their best guesstimate last night was there was 50, 60,000 ducks hitting these two or three fields right, right around here. So it's about mid-afternoon, the ducks are coming out late, so we're kind of scrambling here, but we'll be ready to roll and they should be rolling about 4, 4.15. Hey, stay down. Okay, I'll have a hug. I'll have a hug. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. One of the cool things about the new Lucky HD and their new remote is how easy and fast it is to get all of the decoys synced on one key pod. So it's very simple. You get your duck ready to roll. You turn the power on, hit the button on the front of the remote, 
hit your power button, and you're good to go. You do all of your ducts exactly the same, turn it on, hit the power switch on the remote. They're all programmed to the same remote. And the cool part about this new remote is it has an on-off switch. So when you hit on, they all come on. With the old system, hit the button, you get out of sync. No more out of syncness. You hit the off button, if you've missed one, hit the off button again. Got magnetic wings, pop them in, mount the stake, you're ready to roll. Very crucial to turn these things off when decoying geese. Ducks absolutely eat them up. Canada geese, for some reason, do not like them. So we get them all in one key pod. You see geese, get them off. You see ducks, make sure they're on. We put out a bunch of honker decoys and four lucky HDs. It's a, we're setting, set up for ducks, uh, piles of ducks here. There's maybe 50, 60,000 ducks right in the area we're in. So we're doing a late afternoon duck hunt with high caliber outdoors, Adam Gilkey, Ben Webster. They are loaded up with green. So give them a call. January is an awesome time down here. All the other seasons are closed. These guys are pounding them. When we first set up today, uh, the ducks started moving a little earlier than we thought. And usually in the field, you can get on them pretty hard with the call. So we were all calling, everyone was highballing, we had feed chuckling going on, and they were acting a little bit goofy. So we started out with the calling, uh, pretty hard, pretty aggressive. Um, we've got four or five really accomplished callers in the blind with us, and we like to call, obviously we like to talk to the birds, everybody does. Too much calling is not necessarily what I like, but you know we've had such good luck, especially on the river, a couple days, um, good hard calling was really sucking them in. But, uh, we noticed out here in the field we didn't really need it, the birds weren't really liking it, so we backed off the calling a little bit, got a little bit softer, did a little more uh, pillow talk, they like to call it, a little bit softer calling, and uh, it was like a light switch. So don't be afraid to change it up a little bit. We lightened up the calling a little bit, just a few highballs, a little bit of feed and chuckling. I mean, they seem to like it better. Adapt to your conditions that you're dealing with, because sometimes they want to hear that call all the way to the ground, other times they want to just be greeted and then get off the call. So just read your ducks. Today we could see they wanted a little lighter calling and it worked. Just adapt to the conditions you're hunting with. When we first set up, we had the blinds pushed out a little bit away from this tree line that we were hunting. And the ducks, we knew they were flaring off of something. So of course, as duck hunters, we try and figure out what it is. The first thing we did was we laid off the calls a little bit, and then we also moved the blinds. We tucked the blinds into the tree line a little bit more. Get it done. Don't wait. When you see, usually you can tell by the first bunch or two what's going to happen. If they're flaring, they're seeing something. If they aren't flaring, they just are being ducks, you're probably okay. But we had flaring ducks, so we quick got out, moved the blind, and it made a difference, and we started finishing birds. got set up these ducks have been flying a little later in the afternoon and kind of goofy the weather's been changing fast down here the temps got high uh, there's really no set pattern in them yet but everyone's a little shocked they're moving as early as they are but we're picking away at them here the mass of them hasn't come out yet but there's been enough to make it interesting What we did today is we put out a honker spread basically with four lucky HDs. Uh, ducks love geese 
We didn't have any full body mallards with us, so we just put out a honker spread and ran the four Lucky HDs right in the spread. Very effective. You know, ducks, ducks love Canada geese. So that's a pretty typical late season setup for us. If we, usually we like to put one or two dozen full body mallards out by the Lucky Ducks, but today all we did was honkers and Lucky Ducks, and it was very effective. They just kept circling the blind, circling the decoys. They didn't really have a true direction as to where to finish. You know, we left a huge hole out here in our decoy spread. Uh, they were pretty indecisive. Every flock we'd get one, two, maybe three birds to do it right, feet down, right to spread, but you know, it wasn't really what we were after. We'd pick away at the singles and the, and the drakes in the group, but just wasn't real ideal for filming. Obviously, we got our birds, and as you guys know at home, maybe you don't know, filming is 10 times harder than just coming out here to hunt. If we would've came out here to hunt, we would've been done in 20 minutes. It's a lot easier to, to just come out here and, and have a good time and to shoot birds. We've had uh, quite a few big bunches working us, but the wind's just a little goofy. We're, we're hit underneath this big tree. And it's crazy because they're having they're just hugging this tree coming in around us. And by the time we see them, they get around that tree, they're questionable shots. So what we're gonna start doing here, we're having lots of singles and doubles dropping in on us. So we're just gonna start picking away at the singles and doubles. It's it's actually a good way to hunt. It's a lot of fun. One thing people have noticed, and we've noticed too, uh, it takes very little current on our duck decoys, and they swim. This river's roaring pretty good, but they still got some action. You get in a little bit of current, and they go all over the place, and we attribute it to a couple different things. We've concaved the bottom of the decoy a little bit. It does a couple of things. It gives you a little suck duck action on the holding it to the water, but it's also making these things swim. The other thing I think what it is, is we've got some contour on the top of the decoy, so it's grabbing wind just a little bit different. I mean, there's really no smooth surfaces on that thing. So when you put it in the water, they go. I joke all the time, I say, I like to say we did it on purpose, but it, it just kind of happened. Uh, we did do this suck duck bottom on the thing just to try and hold it to the water a little bit better, but we got some dual action out of it. So they, they do swim and it, you don't need current. They'll do it also in the wind. Every January, we've made it tradition to come on down here and hunt with Ben and Adam at High Caliber Outdoors. They constantly put us on the birds. Uh, we were hunting about two hours to the west of us, and the beauty of these guys down here, there's a few outfitters in the area, they network. Adam reached out to Corey Cribb from Falling Feathers Game Calls, and they had a pile of geese, a pile of ducks. The two outfitters worked together to make this hunt happen for us. So just a shout out to Corey and his crew. They worked their fannies off for us here the last couple days. And it's just a, another tribute to Adam and Ben making sure that you get on the birds. So give them a call. I mean, it's a great way to end your year in January in Kansas. Yeah, so Corey Cribb's a pretty good friend of mine. Um, we've only been working together for a year. He's got his own outfit, I've got mine. He's also got a calling company, and we just work really well together. He's a good dude, good personality, fun to be around, easy going, not a lot bothers him. Uh, unlike me, I'm kind of a little more uptight, a little more serious, but uh, we kind of equal each other out, and it's, it's a good working relationship. You know, the, the smart guides, the guys that are loyal and honest, honest, good, hardworking people, they, uh, 
they work together. We've teamed up with different people and different outfits and we share each other's land and basically just help each other out. You know, that's what it's all about is helping each other out. Everybody shoots more birds that way. Everybody's happier that way and we get along. And as long as you're honest and truthful and things work out, people get along. We're just slowly picking away at them here. Getting some drakes, pears, dropping in, and that's what we decided to do. If we get a big bunch, of course, we'll take it, but picking away at these singles and doubles, and they're getting right over the luckies, and we're hammering them. My old Suburban struggles down here, man. We, <laughs> these guys put miles on. We probably traveled 150 miles one way on one particular day, 100 miles another day. They reach out, they find birds. If there aren't birds in the area, they go find them. They're out scouting every day. I don't know how many miles their trucks have on them, but it has to be immense. But just another shout to Adam and Ben for finding birds. I mean, these guys find them. Ben is probably one of the best scouters I've ever seen. He's constantly finding birds. We didn't have very much wind tonight. The wind definitely played a part. Uh, the birds wanted to circle the blind, circle over the trees that we were hiding in. You know, we just couldn't get them centered up for the camera like we typically like. Even if we would have had 10, 15 mile an hour wind, that would have been great. But no wind, they just kept circling and circling and circling, not wanting to finish down. We have a couple of prototypes for uh, next year, uh, for 2016, that we're going to be selling. This is our, what's going to be our lucky splasher, and it's a mallard drake. Uh, you'll be able to run it on remote if you want. Doing a little R&D out here today, make sure we got the right flotation for it. It's almost done, we just got to figure out the flotation base to make sure it's exactly what we want. Uh, and then it'll be ready to go, but it'll be a spinner splasher on the surface of the water. Should be a really cool product. So the wings on here, one will get off, give off a flash that ducks love, but two, uh, we've got rubber strips coming off it that will splash the water and create a little disturbance on the water. And we always see ducks feeding, moving around um, on the surface of the water and there's always some activity going on. And so if we can create a little turbulence on the water, it makes it look more realistic. And that is a key feature of this new decoy, is that splash on the water. Uh, we have about a 100 mile radius the area that we cover right here in central Kansas. It's a hotbed area. Um, we hunt a lot around Cheyenne Bottoms, Quivira, and then later on in the year these birds start hitting these these big reservoirs and these you know once they start locking up these little ponds around the area they, they'll start hitting the rivers and we hunt the rivers a lot. You know the numbers game it's it's kind of a hard hard question to answer. At Quivira and Cheyenne Bottoms, we house anywhere between a million to two and a half million birds at any given time. You know, once that freezes down, that's kind of a moist soil habitat and it freezes pretty early. Usually around late November, those birds start to disperse and they hit these bigger cities, bigger areas with uh, gravel pits, um, open rivers. Uh, they roost on the gravel pits, they hit the rivers in the daytime, go out and feed and they go back to the roost. So we hold a lot of birds. We've got a lot of open water. Obviously, we've got a lot of grain. The hides are fairly difficult because everybody out here no-tills and double crops. So what we try to do is hunt an edge. So if you're looking for a nice, comfortable hunt, you older gentlemen out there, you ladies, your kids, uh, we sit on buckets and we stand to shoot. So it's very safe, it's very comfortable. It's a bonus bird. Somebody kill it, kill it. There you go. We are in late January. Uh, the grind is winding down. Uh, this is our 2015, early 2016 season. This was actually our last duck and goose hunt. It's been a great year. We've traveled a lot. We've met new, new friends, different states, and duck hunters, goose hunters, it's amazing. You start talking with them, the common threads that you have, the people that you know that they know, it's just fun. We're a good, good bunch of guys, duck hunters, and we had a great season. It was a tough season, but we ended up doing really well toward the end here. Oh, 
Not bad. <laughs> we'll take that. All day. Nice little bonus action. We're winding up our central Kansas hunt with high caliber outdoors, Adam Gilkey, Ben Webster. And once again, the guys came through for us in flying colors. It's been a tough year. We've needed footage. Uh, I got a hold of Adam. Of course, they always have ducks and geese. He said, come on down. So we came down, we had three really good hunts on the water, or excuse me, two really good hunts on the water. One field mallard and two good honker hunts. So they got it done. It's late January. The birds are starting to pair up. They're getting a little tougher, but we got it done. We're just winding up, heading home. Visit our website, www.thegrindwaterfowl.com, where you will find past episodes as well as tips and tactics from the boys here at The Grind. Follow The Grind on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube.